Hi, everyone. I am Carolyn Moore from the Modern Widows Club nonprofit. And I want to welcome you to our webinar today, um, how to be an advocate for your place of worship. I get this question a lot. And so I decided it'd be really wonderful to have this presentation uh, available to anyone who really wants to be that advocate in their place of worship. And we need more people, you know, who care to do that. Um, but uh, how do you get started doing that? What are some of the experiences that I've had in the last 22 years? I'm going to give you five or six examples of uh, what happened when I advocated um, and just little things that a lot of people just don't even think uh, to ask or look for. And so uh, you'll walk away today in this presentation just feeling a lot more confident that you are capable of being that person that creates a really positive change for widows in your place of worship. So I'm going to share my screen here. Let's see here. Um, let me get the view slideshow. Okay. I'm assuming everybody can see this. Um, okay, I hope so. Um, uh, but I occasionally get to do these free webinars, and this is more of kind of an educational webinar uh, because uh, we do need to know uh, how to advocate in our places of worship. Um, and first of all, I just want to kind of start with like, who is Modern Widows Club? Uh, I founded Modern Widows Club in 2011, and, and we serve really to understand the widow's experience, and we focus mainly on growth, not grief. Um, our, our research into widow's physical and mental informs our programs and encourages awareness for what is historically the most underserved demographic of women. Now, um, later, you can go to modernwidowsclub.org, and you can find out some more information. There's a lot. And I put three examples here um, in three different languages, Ukrainian, uh, Hebrew, and Hindi. And so I want uh, everyone to understand that um, our website and our newsletter is in 39 languages. So it can be translated. So if someone is coming into our organization and they uh, speak a completely different language than English, um, we welcome them into our community. And so um, I use these three examples because it shows how diverse, and I, you'll find out later in the presentation why we chose those 39 languages. Where is it? Okay, so I just wanna start off with just a little bit of sharing some of our resources. Um, Modern Widows Club has that inside look newsletter I was talking about that um, is translated in all the languages. It comes out a couple times a month, has a lot of really great uh, health information. We also have events uh, like this. Uh, these are educational free webinars, but we also have events that are large for like hundreds of widows. Uh, our annual widow empowerment event this year, it's gonna be in Scottsdale, Arizona. Last year it was in Houston. This is our sixth year to be doing these events. But some of the events are virtual because it, we need to have um, our widow empowerment event virtual is May 14th. These are things that we offer here at MWC that um, you know, once you start actually creating widows communities in your places of worship, they can partake in all of the things that we have here. We also have e-courses now in our Widow Empowerment School of Thought. I decided to call it that because I was like, where do we start? Like, it's not really a university and it's not credentialed, but it is this school of thought that widows need certain types of courses. Um, in our case, follows the pillars of healthy widowhood. And then we also have our clubs in a club. We have an art book, parenting, dating, and a travel club for our community. And what we've really done is we've leveraged the data that we've gotten from thousands of widows who told us what they wanted, what they needed, and then we created them. So let's go into what International Widows Day is. And some of you may not even know that there is an International Widows Day, but I think that what we can do is really approach um, our places of worship with this information because hardly anyone knows that this day exists, even though the United Nations ratified it as a day of action to address the issues and injustices faced by millions of widows and their dependents in the world. 
So um, by sharing International Widows Day, June 23rd, it, it started in 2010. It took about five years to petition the United Nations. Uh, the Lumba Foundation from the UK actually made it possible. Um, and so they have really been spearheading having widows recognized. There are no countries right now that have a national day of recognition. We are hoping that the US will be the first. We're hoping it will be this year. We don't know, but we do everything that we can to uh, get that to the Senate floor in order to um, make that possible. We feel like if it starts here in the US, it will spread to other countries and it won't just be a United Nations, it'll be all the nations recognize this day. So through the United Nations in 2016, I went there and on this launch of the Global Widows Report. Now I have an actual hard copy of this. And if you can notice, there's a million sticky notes, okay? So I have studied this report, but you can just Google Global Widows Report and there's a download, there's a free download of this 300 plus page PDF. Now in that PDF, what we learned was that there are four main hardship areas that widows face around the world. Doesn't matter what country they're from or whether it's a developed or an undeveloped country, there are four reasons why widows struggle in the world. Financial insecurity, disinheritance, government neglect, and social exclusion. Um, if that's, there's one thing that you understand about this global, global widows report is those four things. And, and why that happens and what, what are the factors around that, that's what you learn in the report. So, um, you know, this is a must read for anyone who really wants to be, understand the crisis of widowhood around the world. So I just wanted to share that here as a resource. This is one of the graphs that you'll see in this book. And it's one of the stunning facts that I learned. 39 countries have more than 1 million widows. And as you can see on my little sign here, this is what we do for International Widows Day. We actually have women who have this sign, 1 million widows, and we have them take a picture with it and post it on social media on June 23rd to tell their stories because they are one of the 1 million widows um, in each one of these countries. As you can see, the United States is number three. Um, there's, a, there's a big country that's missing and this is Africa because their census is poor. They actually don't know how many widows they have and that's even the, that's wor the worst possible thing is they're not even counted. So um, as you can see, there's the two people ahead of us, China, 44 million widows, India, 46, the number top number uh, country that has the most widows. But this graph was shocking to me. And this is why we have 39 languages translated on our website and our newsletter. Because if any of these women find us as a resource out on the internet, I want them to be able to read that they are supported and cared about and there's someone fighting for them. So widowhood is actually more common than most people think. That's a myth that there aren't very many widows in the world. And in fact, in this country, uh, and this is from 2011 Census Bureau. We don't know what the number is for the 20 and 20 census yet, but in 2011, 2,800 women every day become widowed. And there is very little research on widows under the age of 65. So they are, um, widows notoriously are invisible in social services and policies and the urgency uh, for funding for MWC and any really widows organization that is advocating for them is really um, undeniable. Now, here's some statistics. 70% of married women will face widowhood in their lifetime. That is almost a global number. Um, the ages of these widows varies depending on whether you're in a developed or an undeveloped country. But at Modern Widows Club, 58% of those uh, experience sudden loss. We didn't really know what the statistics were until we started um, analyzing the data of thousands of widows who do our surveys. Um, 
the kind of one of the most shocking things that we found out was 76% of our widows are under the age of 59. 59 is the average age of a widow in the United States. In the global South, in undeveloped countries, it's 39. These women uh, are completely un, un, unaddressed. Women under the age of retirement are rarely ever or have in history have ever been researched. And so we're starting to change uh, that dynamic. And in fact, our widows here at Modern Widows Club, the biggest demographic is between the age of 50 and 59. So if the average age here in this country is 59, um, I mean, look at that, right? It is not the vision of what people think of widows, their grandmothers and the gray haired ladies, they, that, that isn't true. Our youngest widow was 20 years old. But you can see here that the 40 to 49 years and the 60 to 69 years, both 24, 23%. So we have a lot of younger widows. They are not retired. They, um, they are in need, they face many secondary losses and challenges um, years after the loss of their partner, which include mental and physical health issues, financial, legal, and the loss of insurance in a many, many ways, or the, the uh, kind of ability to not have the same uh, affordability for insurance. Uh, happens with a lot of our widows. And so, you know, this information came from 1,500 uh, respondents. And in fact, this is actually about 2,000 respondents. This is from our widow empowerment to quit quiz. But when you start actually collecting some of this data, you start really understanding that there's probably widows in your place of worship, <laughs> right? And in fact, we, because we're the third largest country in the United States, um, you know, you saw all those 39 countries, but what are the, what is the worldwide population of widows? Well, it's estimated in the Global Widows Report to be about 258 million, but you have to understand that that's 2015 data from 2010 to 2015 data, right? COVID-19 isn't even factored in these, this data yet. There is no data. It's an estimated 3 million new widows just, just because of COVID-19. So we don't know what those numbers are, but I think it's staggering is it's somewhere between 258 to 300 million widows. And the hardest thing for me to read is that they are caring for 584 million plus fatherless children. That's, when do you ever hear this kind of data? And Every place of worship has a place to be able to help their widows locally and also around the world. This is just an ex one example of Modern Widows Club that I'm showing here with the Rona Foundation in Kenya, where we took a village and we actually took Lego uh, Legos and we shipped them. Uh, we got we had free Legos donated and we shipped them and they were able to sell them and be able to buy items for. Uh, mud hut homes and for seeds and just things that they actually needed to purchase, have real money to purchase villages and bring widows out of the bush and their children so that they would have a roof over their head and the ability to grow food to be able to know where their next meal came from. We've also been able to provide them with sewing machines and also solar lighting so that they can work longer. Um, a lot of them uh, created masks for local hotels. And so they were actually able to sustain themselves as a village. And it all started with just donated Legos. That shows you the power of what anyone can really do. So let's get into the topic of how to become a widow advocate at your place of worship. Now, remember, I'm going to give all of you guys this <laughs> PowerPoint so you don't have to jot all of this down. Um, but I think first and foremost, you just need to be passionate in your calling. <laughs> you know, to speak up and stand up, you got to be ready, um, you're going to get some pushback, but so you got to be just really passionate about this calling to raise awareness for widows. Um, I highly recommend that you dedicate either some kind of Google document or a notebook where you document all of your conversations, the date, who you spoke to, where they were, what was supposed to happen next, and the timeline, because it is going to 
to be a journey. I'll just put it that way. <laughs> um, and you're going to need to remember these things and you're going to have to keep people's um, to, to their word, okay? So, and number three, I think you need to understand the scriptures. I mean, James 1, 27, you know, uh, uh, caring for the orphans, the fatherless and the widows is, um, you know, true religion. Uh, it's, it's how to stay pure and undefiled it's 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 very clear <laughs> that scripture um there's no disputing it and then isaiah 117 about being the defender that's really what you are when you're an advocate you are a defender uh for widows and the cause uh in their distress and and distress can be in the beginning and it can be five years later it can be 10 years later it can be whenever she says it is and that's what we need to understand. We need to believe widows when they say they are in need and they want certain things. So I think we understanding um, the powerful stories of influential widows is important to know in the religious texts. And I'll give you a little bit later some resources on some books that'll be able to help you in that area. So here's the advocacy pre-work. Now, do not approach someone until you've figured out what these things are. Um, you can generally go into your place of work, worship and ask and discover what is currently available. And here's what I wanna highlight in this, this sentence, specifically for widows in your place of worship, not grief, not general women's events, specifically for widows, you, this is what you need to ask because they will, they have notoriously and historically put women, widows into other groups. And we'll talk about that a little bit later, but you need to know specifically how are you honoring James 127. It says very clearly fatherless and widows. We can't forget the and there, the widows. So Number two, you need to ask um, who, which, who's the leader in charge? You know, if in fact um, there is something, who's leading that? What's the leadership team? You need to know who's running the widow's organization. You need to know who is that person's boss and who oversees it. So this is just some information you need to just do, do some asking around because then that's going to start the process of you being able to advocate a little bit more. So the third thing is... <laughs> And this was a, a really big surprise for me, but on a lot of places of worship's information form, uh, there's not a status box for widowed. Um, as you know, our government is single, divorced, married, and um, widowed is actually recognized. Uh, I had someone just last night tell me that they went to a new church and they went to fill out the form and it had two choices, single, married. <laughs> and she said, I wrote in a box and I said, widowed. And she wrote a whole, you know, paragraph on if you don't know who the widows are in your church, you know, how do you know who they are if they don't even have a box? So that, you know, leads me. There's a, if you're, if your place of worship does not have a box on the information sheet for widowed, it's one of the first things that you're going to ask them to do and to correct because but it's also a good indication that they do not know who the widows are. How could they possibly know? They don't even have a box to check. So all of these things are really important to do. Now, approaching as an advocate. Now, let's say you have that information with you, okay? You can go and you can share with your faith leader um, that there's this day, right? The significance of International Widows Day. We encourage people to do something around June 23rd because it, it is an official day. It is the day that we, until we have a national day here in the United States, um, it is the day where widows get to be recognized and we have to push that initiative. So, but very few people uh, will have heard of it, okay? So, but most people I have shared it with are happy to have the information. And so the goal is to maybe everybody just make that a time of the year where we actually do something for widows. Now, number two, if you're a widow yourself, share your story. Um, share where you needed support. You need to make this very personal. Um, if you 
you already know the leaders in your church, or maybe this is the first time you've ever had a meeting with them. This is your chance to say, this is what happened to me. This is, you know, I want, I, I want to change things because I know other widows are in need and just make it extremely personal. Number three, ask to set an appointment because more than likely you're talking and informing while they're doing a million things. Um, <laughs> faith leaders are busy. They are very busy caring for a lot of different people in a lot of different areas. And they're not accustomed to being approached about doing something for widows. Um, and, and so this, this may be something that has just never been addressed. And so ask when they can make an appointment and you can have some undivided attention because you'll need that to just kind of bring in, you know, maybe you have um, a little book I'm going to share you, or maybe you share Modern Widows Club and say, um, just give some frame of reference of why, why this is so important and how, how to discuss the possibility of them recognizing widows. I mean, in a, in a perfect world, you know, my dream would be that every place of worship recognizes Widow's Day. This year it's on a Thursday, so a lot of people will do the weekend after and just make that a Widow's Weekend. That's what we do here. It's on the annual calendar. And from now on, we're going to, as a congregation, do something. So, <clears throat> okay. So let's go to the first, <laughs> here's the first, here's a myth I'm gonna bust. Because a lot of what I do is I'm, I, I have to bust a lot of myths for people. So a lot of times, um, you know, I get this response from leaders. Well, widows are fine being mixed in with single, divorced, and married existing support groups. And I would just like to say, false. That is not true. Widows want a community that understands their experience. <clears throat> from my experience, widows need each other. Um, they need leaders. Uh, this is why Modern Widows Club has a leadership, leadership conference and a leadership um, development program. Uh, those women are the ones that are advocating it, truly in the U.S. Um, right now. But <clears throat> we didn't have widow mentors, leaders, and advocates. Um, who are widows to look up to? But we can. Well, there are widows who are great mentors and leaders in places of worship and in, in congregations. They just may not be being identified. So um, they really do want to be in with the women. Um, yes, they've been married. Yes, they've been single. And I know that they are seen as single, but I'm not the type of single woman that is the same single woman as my daughter. <laughs> Completely different experience. And in fact, widows are women of fulfilled marriages. So if we really want to get technical, we can say, um, no, these women aren't married. Uh, they're not single and they're not divorced. They are women of fulfilled marriages. And so they're a different category and that needs to be considered. Okay, so let's move on. So these are just some of the women that are the real women in our organization. I thought it was worth just showing these women um, and they hug and they cry and, and they inspire and they, uh, they have real community and community is what our ladies our ladies at MWC come from all kinds of faith backgrounds and partner statuses and eth ethnic backgrounds and just circumstances. And that's what makes us so beautiful. Um, we're you know, growing and finding empowerment all together. <clears throat> the second myth is widows feel inclusivity in places of worship. Okay, this is a maybe. This is, a, I'm not going to say uh, uh, false or true because our research shows um, that 70% that actually had a place of worship, okay? But here's where there's an issue. Only 49% of those felt uh, the, the sport was insufficient. So that means 51% felt it was sufficient. It's a little bit too low of a number for me. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know if you agree, right? Like this number needs it needs to go up. Women need to feel um, that, that social exclusion that I told you that so many women um, struggle with. It's right here. It's right here in our places of worship and it's right here in our communities in uh, the United States and, and around the world. And so we need, really need to look at this and, and we really wanna research this a little bit more because what, when we ask people what their background was, it was varied. 
it was extremely varied. And, um, but we also asked them what was helpful, right? Um, and what was not helpful. And so we've got about 250 responses of those answers straight from the widow's mouth. And um, wow, I, is, was it eye-opening looking at those. It, some I just warmed my heart how some people were really served and we wanna make sure we share that. But some of the, uh, some of the negative comments were hard to read. Okay, so let's talk about the solutions. So this year, um, really what we wanna do is we're about two, a little bit less than two months out. Um, your, your place of worship may only be able to just honor and recognize widows on International Widows Day or the weekend of that service, okay? This may be all that they are actually able to do. And, and if you do that, if you get people uh, in leadership actually willing to do this from uh, the pulpit or the leader, you know, in any of the, uh, the groups that they have, count it as a win because of that. And sometimes just getting them to do that one thing for widows is a big deal, but encourage them to um, email or uh, send a card uh, from the leaders or the deacons. They can even go so far as I'll, I'll share a few stories in a minute about getting gift cards or maybe getting flowers for that weekend. And anyone who is widowed, uh, we'd like to give this to you. That little bit of recognition is powerful because widows are so accustomed to not being hearing um, any kind of recognition uh, from the leaders because you know married uh, married is referenced a lot because a lot of uh, leaders are married and that's their reference point right. Um, number two, just ask to make it an annual day, like I was saying earlier. Maybe they don't do it this year. But you might be advocating for next year to be able to create something. And it may take a year. And a lot of the places that I have worked with took a year um, or more. So you just don't know what's already on their plate. And, you know, but you're planting seeds. You really have to see it that way. And also be willing to volunteer to make it happen. Because the last thing leaders want is for you to bring all these great ideas to them and just drop it in their lap, sort of like people do with me at MWC. And they'll, this would be a really great idea. I'm like, yeah, you go do that. <laughs> so you got to find out if they want to commit and do it and then be willing to volunteer and maybe put a team together to make it happen. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to just share some of the lessons from my past experiences. Now, um, last a lot of times the International Widows Day, I will send out a letter uh, to really big churches, you know, to to like the Lakewood Church and Saddleback Church and Harvest Ministries and Willow Creek and you know, all these really big and, and big um, synagogues. And just I literally would send an email and say, "Hey, what are you doing for International Widows Day?" <laughs> and I sort of just drop that, I just drop it right there. And it's, I don't, you know, go on and say, you should be doing something, blah, blah, blah. I just like, I assume that they are going to do something for widows on International Widows Day. And so it's been really successful with the way I've done that. Now, Harvest Ministries, um, Greg Glory, huge church in Riverside, California, they wanted to do something last year, but hello, pandemic, COVID, you know, what can we do? Well, they got creative, right? They ended up doing a weekend car wash. And what was so cool about this is they got the men involved with working with the youth ministry. The men were leading the youth, the youth in actually washing the cars, okay? And so the women would get out of the cars, have the masks on and everything. And it was outdoors. And so it was safe um, with some distancing. And then the women would go inside with the women's ministry and they um, had little baskets for them. And in those baskets, they had um, a Chick-fil-A gift cards and just some just beautiful gifts, candles and stuff like that, that, that they had put together for the widows. And then when they came out, they had a rose on their dashboard. So the car was clean and then they had a rose. I thought that was a really ingenious way. And what was interesting is when I sent that email, the lady that received it in the office was widowed. And so it was, you know, there are no coincidences that the person that received my email was like, there's an International Widows Day. Oh, 
game on. We are doing that. And I remember her emailing, it's like, I got them to do it. Like they're going to do it. And she was so empowered um, being the advocate to have this at her place of worship. So that's something that they've continued on. Now, LifePoint Church, um, one of our community advocates, um, she, Terry, she, she got her youth group to do a bake sale. They raised $2,000. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just like, wow. But you know, who who buys when you have a bake sale at a place of worship, everybody buys something, right? So everyone learned about Modern Widows Club. It was an ingenious way to support widows. Um, they also give uh, their group a private space, which is not all places of worship will do this, but um, they offered a place of worship and that was wonderful. Um, Oops, I, I missed one. I have to, I have to correct this. Um, actually, number three was First Baptist Orlando. I must have accidentally messed that up. They had an International Widow's Day luncheon. They had, three years ago, they called me up. They needed some consulting um, because they had 400 widows existing that they knew of in their congregation and on, in their database. Well, I came in and I said, well, you need leaders and we need to find those leaders because once you figure out how many widows actually are active on that list, um, but the way we're going to find leaders is we're going to put these ladies together. So do you have the budget to be able to have a luncheon for these 400 widows? And they said, well, it'd take up our whole <laughs> annual budget. And I'm like, well, let's use it. <laughs> and so we did. And 200 ladies uh, showed up. And out of those 200 ladies, they were actually able to find um, the leaders. And they actually found several groups of leaders because what we found is that we seated them in a north and a south and an east and west layout in the room. And so you were seated next to widows that lived near you. What a brilliant um, way to meet widows that are right in your midst um, that you didn't even know of that go to your church. I mean, I, it was just like real beautiful. I got to speak at that event um, and about International Widows Day and the senior pastor um, came and just loved on these women. And they, they, they openly apologized for not knowing what to do for widows, but that they were changing and they really were committed now. And that was a very beautiful, um, that was a beautiful kind of atonement to witness. And it really did turn that church around. And now they have a huge thriving widow's ministry. Um, the next one is First United Methodist Church in this little town in Arkansas called Eureka Springs. Now, what's interesting about this church is um, huge LGBTQ community, uh, really artsy little mountain town, touristy. Um, but in this church, Blake Lassiter um, is, um, is a widower. And, and so he, he knows the experience of widowed. So he decided that he would just create a community group where anyone who was widowed, a widow or a widower, and no matter what your partner status was, you could come and get support. It has turned into the biggest group that they have. And I, I've gone there twice uh, personally to meet everyone. And it was beautiful to see the love in the room. And it had nothing to do with whether, whether you were straight or gay, uh, male, female, how long it had been, who, who you loved. It, it, was just, it was just a really beautiful example of what can happen when you speak love into a widow's life. Um, it's turned into, um, he was going to be on the call today, but they're actually having a yard sale to be able to have dinner, di future uh, dinners uh, for the widows on certain significant days. Um, and I actually found a donation for them for, they were actually able to purchase a handicap accessible van because a lot of their widows just couldn't get out and do things um, because they didn't have a lift um, on any, any of their, their vehicles. And so I was able to secure that for them. And that was really a beautiful day to see when that delivered. So it, you just never know what you can't, what you, your part will be. And then there's First United Methodist Church in another small town, Fort Smith. They actually launched a modern widows club in their place of worship. Now, this is the first time a, method, a church 
has allowed us to launch in like a modern widows club in an actual church and so they provide space and community support and what's interesting about this is the the lead pastor is married to a woman who is widowed the uh the main uh, gail in the office she's widowed um it really took it there's a lot of female uh, widowed investors you know and donors um in the in the so there was a lot of widows that wanted this to happen and so this is the power of getting widows together (laughs) he says like this is gonna happen and by sheer you know commitment and passion they they made it happen so i just i love that town and then Coastline Community Church is where I was baptized a few, rebaptized a few years ago because so I wanted to be baptized in the in the ocean, and um, I have been attempting to get them for three years to just just do a widow's brunch, just do a widow's brunch, you know, get your ladies together. Well, we did it finally in December, and it really I can't take credit for for it. There was a gentleman who is just a wonderful. Uh, advocate and then um another woman a married woman and they would not let it let it die on the vine they were just like we're getting this and so i'm happy to uh share that 61 ladies showed up for that brunch and only about six or seven were from that church so word got out and women drove hours and hours to come to this widow's brunch because they'd never been invited to one and so what's that, what that has turned into is now we have found leaders and they're going to be launching in, in June. So this shows the power of just persistence. We are the, what are we, the, um, uh, the persistent widow. That's what, that's what we are in these cases. So w- these are the significant days for support. So what will happen is we'll say, okay, we want to do something for widows. Um, if, if we start a widow's, a bigger widow's group or a widow's ministry, which would be like, wow, uh, because they simply don't really exist anymore um, <clears throat> in most places. Um, these are the main times of the year that widows really need support and attention. The angel anniversary, that's what we call it here at MWC, holidays, Mother's Day, Father's Day, uh, a lot of our mothers are fathers too. A lot of the widowers are mothers. And so these are significant days. Solo, their solo parents' birthday, the spouse is not there to remind the kids to do anything or to, to make it special for them. And then of course, Valentine's Day, which is significant to me because that's the day I lost my uh, husband, Chad. Um, here's a really good resource. This is the little book that I recommend that everyone give to someone in their place of worship. And it's a really short read because half of it is a book and half of it is pastoral application. Um, it is, this statement, um, is very telling about the book. Let's just face it. Widows are easy to overlook in our culture today. The Bible was clear. Taking care of widows is not optional. It is a biblical imperative. The three men that actually wrote this book, interesting, I, I, I reached out to Brian Croft, the main author of this, and um, I just told them, you know, I'm going to buy a couple hundred of your books and start giving them out. <laughs> and we had a donor that actually was gracious enough to help us purchase these books. Um, and that's what we do. We actually send these every time we uh, meet someone or maybe we launch a new uh, community and they have a faith community that they want to give this to. Um, but it was written by three men who are married. And so, you know, I always wonder, you know, how many widows did you actually um, talk to in order to know what it is? Because in the, in the application part of it, there's, there's some things that I don't quite agree with, uh, but I can understand how it is coming from their perspective. They're, it's definitely more slanted towards care for the ultra widows um, in the church. And so it leads me to believe that, um, they really don't even know about the younger widows, um, but it still applies uh, scripturally and biblically. So these are just a few of the resources of the books that I uh, just took a shot of them. Um, on the bottom, there's the World, the World Widows Report. Um, I love the book, Salty, Salty Wives, Spirited Mothers and Savvy Widows. Such a great book, just talking about um, widows and the importance in the Luke's God, 
Luke's gospel. And then Not Alone is actually, it's um, 11 inspiring stories of courageous widows from the Bible. Um, really great read on just, you know, kind of her thinking, thinking through what widows would be thinking, the biblical widows. Um, Current Widowhood is an actually academic book. Helena Lapata is the uh, research widows. She was a sociologist uh, from Loyola University. This book taught me a lot um, about widows because I realized that when this book came out in 1997, nothing has really changed for widows since then and um, really kind of made me uh, understand that uh, it's going to take a lot uh, of widow advocates to really get behind what Helena Lopata was studying back in the 90s. And then The Orphan, The Widow and Me were actually mentioned in this book. Um, this is uh, written by an, an, um, the author J.T. Olson and I are friends. And it's, they have a both hands organization that helps both widows and orphans and a beautiful organization in Nashville, Tennessee. And then of course the caring for widows and then healing after loss is a, is a little book that a lot of places of worship will give away to the ladies. They'll buy these. I know that's what Blake does at First United Methodist. Um, now I'm just gonna show a little video and then we'll be done and be doing a Q and A. Hi, I'm Carolyn Moore from the Modern Widows Club. June 23rd is International Widows Day, and because it's not covered in the media, we're going to create our own video. I um, founded an organization here in Orlando. It's a nonprofit called the Modern Widows Club, and we're doing a project for International Widows Day on June 23rd. And what we're out here doing is trying to find out if people can pick which one they think is a widow. I'm going to say... It could be anybody. I don't think any of they all look happy. They're all smiling. Mary, Mary. 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 Uh, Mary. Mary. Now go ahead and lift up their picture. Okay, why'd you pick Mary? Her smile didn't look real. They're just not as happy anymore. Jessica. I'd say Jessica. Now lift up their picture. She's so young, and I figured that nobody would expect someone that young to be a widow. I feel like maybe the eyes, she's looking for somebody in that picture. I'm going to say Jen right here. For a simple reason being, husband may have been military, may have lost him. Oh, wow. Natalie. Natalie. Durga. Bonnie. Now, why did you guys pick them? Um, I saw the camera. And I thought you try to find something new to like make your life more exciting. Uh, she's older, so I thought like her husband would pass away. What would you say if I told you all of these women were widows? Oh wow, wow! Every person on this board is actually a, an American widow. Oh wow! I can be honestly, I, I never would have expected that. <laughs> I mean, I could have known that everybody was a widow. There, that's crazy to think. She's barely out of high school, you know. Yeah. She looks like she's early, mid-30s, maybe. She looks like she's... 20? Yeah. I would believe it. A lot of women lose their husbands. There are no physical distinguishing features that designate a widow. Today, approximately 2,800 women will become widowed in America. Today? Today. Wow, that's a lot. An average of 2,800 a day, every day. That's crazy. That's yeah. My mom's widowed, too. Your mom is widowed? Mm-hmm. That was scary, because you know when they say... When they lose their husbands, you know, they go right away afterwards because they die of misery or pain. So who helps your mom? My sister. sister. She lives with my sister now, yeah. I know someone who's been widowed for over 20 years and she's never been able to find somebody that she loves as much as her husband. Who do you think actually helps widows? You mean like an organization? Yeah. Or... Yeah, no, I don't know. Losing a spouse is the number one most stressful life event according to the Homes and Race Social Readjustment Scale. No one is helping these women to get resources quick enough to be able to recover from all the secondary losses. They lose their homes, they lose their health care. And so we try to get them resources quicker, but also a community that's really focused on growth and empowerment and not stuck in grief. You know, for widows like me and Jessica and Jen and Durga, we all have small children. Um, and so what we found is that, like, Jessica's of the our organization are helping the Marys learn how to 
actually use their phone better. And then the Marys are babysitting for Jessica's kids. Oh, wow, that's amazing. Yeah, there's, there's like, like camaraderie, you know, between all of you. That's great. We want women to grow and have resources and be able to rebuild a new life. They need the support that you're providing. Someone like me, who 18 years ago, I thought my life was over. And every one of these women has found me and went, oh my gosh, if she can do it, I can do it. And then you come out the other end and there is some positives to it, you know, big positives in your case. Well, we're creating this video because what happens is no one covers it in the media. There's so many causes these days and there's so many charities and so much need for social help and um, but you don't really hear about this at all. You have to find a community that actually understands you and has compassion for you so that you can trust and feel have belonging and also find opportunity again. Well, we do that at Modern Widows Club. On International Widows Day, June 23rd, we want to raise awareness that what is misunderstood is often underserved. And at Modern Widows Club, we want to make sure that our ladies are served, heard, respected, and loved. <laughs> Hi. Wow. <laughs> it's a, uh, that was a little experiment I did a few years ago where I just uh, took a film crew and went down to the farmer's market and said, can I have your attention for just a little bit? And we filmed all of these people. It was really uh, remarkable. One thing I want to do, this is our last slide, is I just want to thank everyone. Uh, people often ask how they can help our organization. Um, there's a all different ways you can we've got a petition out there you can subscribe to our uh, inside look newsletter you can try to launch a community um, in your your area you can volunteer um, you can choose us on amazon smile if you ever shop on amazon as your charity of choice you can give monthly we we only have about 48 donors right now and we're really looking to expand that um, to be able to serve the widows that we you know, doubled capacity in the last two years um, or give annually whatever is a personally significant to you. Um, one thing I want to share is our logo. So we went through and we had a really great um, rebranding last year and our logo is very significant. Um, there's 59 dots in our logo and that represents the average age of a widow of 59 in the United States. And it's all of our widows in different stages and places in their life and they come from different backgrounds and um, it just kind of showed that the variety that we have here but we all have this common um, connection and that brings us into the circle at modern widows club and if you can see it at the very top of that circle is a key stone it is the only um, actually the only item in the logo that is not a circle it's a keystone and that is the person that we lost that's what brought us all together so on this slide it just has an email and the phone number that you can reach us and i'm going to stop sharing now and we can go to the q a if we have any questions i didn't know if there were any um let's see let me look at the chat that that. was fabulous <laughs> And the, the video is so touching. I'm so teary eyed. Oh, thank you. Yeah, the video is really powerful. Um, we, we had to work on a really top budget to do that, but you know, it's on our YouTube channel and it is um, really opens a lot of people's eyes uh, because I think that it's sometimes very hard to get the widow perspective, but it's like, if you're just asking somebody to pick a picture and you're like, oh, by the way, they're all we <laughs> it's just this amazing moment but I think we can all uh really relate to that right like do I do we do any of the widows we know are they the typical woman because all women you know when we look at 70 percent of women will be widowed um you know are the youngest widow and that we have had at MWC is 20 years old um and I think the oldest is 98 so, um, yeah, it's a powerful, powerful video. So I wanted to show that at the end today. Does anybody have any questions here? I know we're right. Um, we, we've been going here for quite a while. And it's a longer presentation. And I thought that um, 
Yeah, does anybody have any questions? No? No questions right now, just gratitude that you did this. Right, great, I'm so glad. Um, thanks everybody for coming on the call and um, we'll send this to you guys later and I'm so grateful for you guys caring to become an advocate. Thank <laughs> you.